conscience Did the shit with no sponsors I put in work, I put in work in a Hyundai Dropping that bitch on a Sunday I put in work, imported beat out of Sweden Killing it bit for no reason I put in work, I put in work, I put in work, I put in work Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your favorite shooter, AP. I'm here with my boy. King Solo, baby. <laughs> King Solo, all right. Um, we just want to talk to you real quick just about um, general fitness, right? We're going to try to bring to you every week uh, some type of conversation on health and wellness, right? Whether it's uh, for general population or for athletes. Um, more specific conversations, right? So hoping to um, get some dialogue going. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the, in the comment section uh, and do a timestamp so we understand where you're coming from. And also do, do us a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for more content so we can grow up um, out here on YouTube. Appreciate oh, yeah. you. Oh yeah, baby, yes, yes. All right, man, so what are we um, gonna talk about today? Uh, pretty much, I'm thinking, let's get to the root, starting of a fitness journey, you know? Like okay. The ones who are struggling to start and the ones who have started, but then it seems to think that they know what's going on, but in the midst of it, they end up finding some problems and now it's how can I start from square zero? And it's always best to start from square zero because you get to understand the puzzle okay. from there, you know? Okay. And as we go forward, so that's where my brain is at and we're gonna start from ground zero and from there we'll answer any of you guys questions that you have in the next video and then add that in our chapters you know as we okay. with those things. Okay so let's let's start then with the um uh somebody just first walking into the gym right uh let's say they are a little bit nervous you know um they haven't been in the gym in a while but intimidated etc um how do you how do you begin the what would you say to that to that person? Oh, first, it's about making them feel welcome because a lot of individuals have different anxieties and not being comfortable with the gym full of lot of people, you know, and at the same time not knowing what to do as being putting themselves in their shoes is a little bit different, you know what I mean? So with the, what I'm saying is that if ha they haven't been to the gym for a while and they just walk in, First, you gotta just greet them gently and just be yourself, you yeah. know? And with that, it's level yourself to the where they at, understand where they're coming from, and get to know what they want, why are they there. Once you know why they are there, you can proceed. Okay. So, um, like what, so let's say you have this, this, uh, this new person for um, the initial consultation, right? Um, what type of things are you looking to find out specifically about them um, to help you get a better understanding of their fitness goals? So, that's a great question and I like that. And a lot of trainers really miss this part as well too, right? And for me, I need to know their nugget. And their nugget is, like I said, why are you in the gym? As in why do you want to change? Why are we sitting for this? Because there has to be a reason why you decided to come sit for me, mm -hmm. right? So otherwise, you wouldn't. And that's why sometimes we have a client that needs to be that's scheduled to meet at this time, and they don't show up. Okay. They don't show up for a specific reason, right? Regardless of whatever that other reason is, there's another main reason why that visit was not priority on the list, okay. right? So with mine is. I will get to understand what they want to work on, what they want to change, what they see themselves in the future. As like next three months from now, if they don't have a vision, what do you want to see when you look at yourself in the mirror? What do you want to see when you look at yourself in the mirror? Right, and that's a big part because some people don't have a goal and they don't understand how to make a goal. I mean, I should, I should say they don't know how to make a goal properly, right? And if you don't know how to make it, attain to that goal, and if you don't attain to that goal, you're not gonna get results. When you say a smart goal, what do you mean by that? When I say smart goal, it means make it a realistic goal that's attainable. And a realistic goal is like, let's say somebody say they wanna lose fat, right? And they come in the way about 280 pounds, and their ideal goal is to be 190, right? And that's a big goal. That's a big difference from 280 pounds to 190. 
that's almost a hundred pounds, right? Right there. All right. So now for you to make a big goal, a smart goal, you would need to drop a twenty per twenty. Okay. So what, what what I'm asking you, I guess, like you know, the smart and and like fitness jargon stands for something, right? So right. smart is like what specific, right. right? So you have to say, okay, I want to I want to get from this number to that number, or I want to increase my mile time by this, right? So a specific goal, right? Right. Um, then it has to be measurable, right? Um, so meaning that there has to be a, a way we can track it. So if that's um, a skill, which usually I don't advise people to like use that as their measure, but it could be a measure, right? Body fat, it could be, you know, waist measurements, you know, it could be um, uh, stamina, right, right. It's like, so anything that's, that you can measure over time, right? You right. can make a, uh, a chronology of, um, of measurements and make sure, that, to make sure that you're on the right track. Um, attainable, is that what's right. like Attainable, right? So that means it can be realistic, right? right? Um, oh, right. Attainable and realistic, right? So attainable means that it's possible, it's, you have the ability to get that goal, right? right. Um, attainable, some people say attractive as well, um, within that, that A for, for smart. Right. Um, the R is, it's realistic, right? So within it, within this period, so with the, if someone comes to me and say, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds in six weeks, right? I'm the miracle worker, but I know one is because Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but yeah, but at the end of the day, that's not me, right? I can't, I can't do that for you, right? So it has to be a, a realistic goal, right? Uh, it took some time for you to get to um, the point that you are right now. And so it takes um, some, some time as well, maybe not as much time, right? But some time as well for you to, um, to, to turn back that clock and then timely, right? right? You have to give yourself uh, uh, a period of time. So okay, um, your if, if your beat goal is fifty pounds, that's great. Uh, what's 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 in six months or what's what's the um, the one month goal? With three months, six months, right? So we figure that into like um, like meso cycles, right? right? To right. be able to the track, right? So smaller bites, right? Eventually, you get to the whole thing, right? To be able to break it down for them. Right, exactly. And that was the same thing I'm saying. Realistic, right? So if you are three eighty, yeah, two hundred eighty pounds, and you want to be a one ninety make it realistic. You can't say you will be at 190 in six months. That's not realistic. Right. So saying you could be from 280 to 260 and three to six months, that's realistic. But that's a 20 pounds, right? And that's a jump start to get into your 190. And that's where motivation comes in because you lost 20 pounds and you see the results, right? Measurable. You can see the difference and body composition. And then now you put in another time of it's another smart goal within three to six months at a time, so that's attainable. Three to six months is not long enough, it's not too long for you to be overwhelmed and uh, mess up it, and at the same time, for you to get over, uh, achieve, uh, like, what's uh, not overachieve, um, what's the word? Loss of motivation and courage, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of individuals don't get the courage to go to the gym once their body's really sore and they're not really seeing results because they did not stick to the meals and their hydration, all that has a composition in place. So it's mm -hmm. a whole life journey. You can't make it just a goal and then you have your life separate. It has right. to be the lifestyle because if you're making going to the gym part of it like a chore, that like it's a duty, you're not going to get to it. Oh, it's just blank, blank, you know? Okay. So, that's where it comes into having people realize I'm starting a journey now. I need to be smart about this and make it enjoyable and have it be part of my life because it is my lifestyle. Okay. I live this. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I understand. Um, so in terms of, okay, so, so once you meet with that person, you, you figure what the goals were, you make a plan. What are usually I like to get people three things to work on right before I see them the next time, right? Or you know, we said like like really small um, like all, um, like wins, like easy wins, successes, right? Just to get get some of those on that belt, right? Um, I've typically found that there are a few type of people out there. There's type of people who 
you know, want to go, you know, balls to the wall, right? Like they want to do everything. They want to go on a 800 calorie diet, right? They want to lift six days a week. They want to, you know, do it, do all the cardio. I mean, they're ready to go, right? There's people, and then there's, there's people on the other extreme of that, right? That like they, okay, I want, I want, I have a 50 pound goal, but I want to come to the gym once a week, you know? <laughs> right. Um, uh, can I, can I still eat my? My uh, my donuts and my I still go to Starbucks and right. get my coffee, macchiato, whatever. Right, right, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, like well, I'm, I'm not gonna compromise at all on my meals. Right, right. Or some right. ice cream. Or yeah, just, we want to live the best life. You know, so yeah, yeah right. no sacrifices there. Right, and then there's people you know within the spectrum, right? So and it, doing the consultation, you can already find out what the person that you have in front of you, right? right? Um, but what would you say to the, the person who's like who's hardcore, right? In terms of like temperance, and what would you say to the person who's on the on the other extreme in terms of um, like like actual expectations? That's hard to say, man. And for me, it's about I like I figure out you you can't tell the same thing to everybody, right? I can't. I don't. Me, I don't tell everyone the same thing. All my clients, I don't tell them the same thing. Now, when I say I don't tell them the same thing, is when I say I don't say the same thing, it's not what's right, what's not wrong. If I say drink some water, I'll tell you drink some water. I'll tell this guy drink some water to get the best right. But now in the goal of different, they have different life, right? So the person that is wanting to go back to the wall, right, and they don't know how to slow down, you have to have them realize what are the consequences if they don't slow down. Mm-hmm. Once they realize what the consequences are if they don't slow down, then they'll boom, the light bulb up. You see if this happens, and you have to also let them experience that. Yeah, yeah, let them for sure. That. If they don't experience that little small muscle tweak or injury or whatever, they won't really listen. Right. You know, and also, or that or that, 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 that soreness, right? After exactly. like two days of soreness. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to have it. They want to do. They want to work out with you. Then they want to go take uh, you know a barbell class. <laughs> then they want to take another class. They go to the cycle. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like you be in the gym for my whole shift. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like literally. Yeah. Uh, I, I trained five clients back to back. Um, you were still doing all that. Yeah, and you're still here, right? Yeah. And then the next, you know, they probably do it like a day or two. Right. And then that third day. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's, this is where I actually go with then King Tut time under tension program, and that goes into the training that we give them will be the most crucial workout that they would experience, mm-hmm. and it's benefited because the following results will make you realize like you can go boss and walk, but you have to be smart about this. Yes. Right. And that's how you get to go by making a smart choice. And then at the same time, the other individual who wants to come once a week and still drink up wine and have some ice cream or whatever, and also like, like you say, wins, right? So, um, what are they willing to give up on one of the three, right? Let's say ice cream, um, wine, and then what's the other? Starbucks, one? baby. Starbucks, baby, right? So. Starbucks is money. Haven't realized that it adds up money during the week, right? Mm-hmm. So do the calculation for them. So that could be one. Minimize the Starbucks, right? And the wine, in a way, it releases stress in their mind, right? Mm-hmm. And it's also a battle. Some people say a glass of wine is good for you. Some people say a glass of wine is not good for you. Mm-hmm. So you don't get deep into that yet. You let that sit, right? Let them keep enjoying that. Mm-hmm. The win of them taking the Starbucks is a win. And now the ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. It tastes so good when they're stressed. But it is so at the good. same time, I ain't gonna lie. I love ice cream too, you know. But now I'm smart about it. When and they have to make a budget, right? So budget your calories out. And this is what I'm gonna tell you: if you drink this amount of water for this amount of X days, right? And if you get on the scale, you see one small percentage, right? And so on. Do that three times, then you get to have a pint of ice cream. Mm-hmm. And so on, maybe like you know, a spoon or so, right? And mm-hmm. that's like, okay, maybe let me make this go so I can have a little taste of ice cream. Mm-hmm. And then, do so eventually, don't get out of that craving for the ice cream. Because, speaking of experience, I had a client, she literally loved ice cream. And when I say loved ice cream, every weekend. And now, when it comes to monthly cycles, 
she is on it a daily basis. When she gets home from work, it's ice cream, right? And this is what I was told. Now we started training, and I told her exactly what I just said, right? Have you realized the consequences that would happen if you don't sacrifice these things, right? So therefore, is she kept on being consistent in the gym and also with the food outside of the gym, making it a lifestyle. Three months comes in, she saw a lot of big results. And that came into also her minimizing the amount of time she eats ice cream. And then six months at a time, she had ice cream once, right? Mm -hmm. And she told me like, wow, this is so different. The feeling that I get now versus the feeling that I had now. It's I'm back then, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even get the craving to go for ice cream like that anymore. Like I just had it because it's been so long and I honestly wanted to test myself and then see if you were right based off the ice cream and so on. Mm -hmm. And yet after she ate it, she got back on the scale, weight went up, right. you know what I mean? And it took some time to really go back down because when you have a cheat meal, because usually every weekend you go have a cheat meal, it'll back you up three, four days. Mm -hmm. And if on a Monday through Friday you're good, Saturday you have a cheat meal, you're not gonna be good to the following Wednesday or Thursday. That's right. a whole week back down. Yeah. You, if we eat just that junk meal, that Saturday and Sunday, it's gonna take that whole entire week to digest that meal. And then your body needs to metabolize it the following two, three days. And then you need to detox it and so on. So it's like, it's already adding some extra mm -hmm. fat in you that you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do agree with that. Um, you're too nice, <laughs> right? Um, I also used to be very nice, and then I stopped being nice, right? Uh, because what you realize is, so, so with those two, I think the easiest ones to deal with are the ones that are extreme. Let's just let them, let them run into the wall, right? <laughs> go ahead. Oh, yeah, go for it, right? But let me tell you. We have a session in two days. So first of all, like doing that consultation, right? You're talking about time and attention, right? Uh, like I'm definitely going to make sure they feel that workout, right? And then if you still want to come to the, the, the problem, right? I just want you to know that in three days or two days, whatever we agreed on, right? I'm going to see you right. and you're not avoiding this workout, right? right? You see, so you can do everything you want to do on the, these two days, right? but you, you will be at the gym to, to do your program Right, that's that's gonna be specific to, to you, right? To get to get your goals. So those are easy. so usually then they start to wean up a little bit because they like, my body can't take this, right? right? And then they start to feel a little, you know, little aches. little aches. Yeah, exactly. The inflammation starts to like the acid starts to build yes, up, right? right? And then you know they start walking a little, little, oh. little gingerly, you know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. So 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 those are like easier um, to deal with. Um, the people though on the other extreme, the once a week and uh, you know they enjoy the foods, right? Um, it's, it's it's almost like a, it has to be some type of compromise, right? Because um, even if they agree to to relinquish that cold turkey, right? That's something that's part of the lifestyle. They will always go back to that, right? So then we have to teach habits, right? So maybe you know um, you know a a win would be like okay. If you if you have uh, uh, ice cream five days a week, let's go to four days a week. You know what I mean? Or if you, if you have like two servings, let's go to one serving, right? So something like that. That would be like my uh, first stage, five right? To three. You're not getting four. <laughs> five to three. But as I'm saying, yeah. So 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 that would be the, the first level of compromise. The second, would be, okay, like what are other alternatives, right? That that we can everything that has as a healthier option, right? Even though I prefer be to Dis discard that completely, right? right? right. Um, but okay, so like, where can we find, you know, like a uh, uh, a bridge, right? Because I mean, I, I want I want to start up this relationship on a good note. You know, I mean, this is a honeymoon phase, right? Yeah, we, yes. We're wooing each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Real talk, now, man. Because like, listen, like, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Like we be high fiving, yeah. chest bumping, yeah. oh, exchange like, information yeah, and stuff. Man. Yeah, That's so we do it with motivation, that, right? So that they're, they're more willing. To do those things, so we are the five alternatives, right? Um, but but at the end of the day, I was tell them, I was like, listen, you're paying me $130 an hour, okay? So that drink that you <laughs> that you're gonna consume, that drink you, you go to the store and buy for 20 bucks a bottle, whatever like that, all right? right. Um, that's causing you, you know, 
mortgage, right? That's that, that's a mortgage payment right there because uh, yeah. because you're, a hind, you're you're hindering your progress. So if you at the end of the day decide to do that, right, then you have to take accountability, right? But you know, in order to, so I, I try to be as as straightforward as possible, right, to explain what the consequences are, right? Not anything in moderation, right, is 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 is, is a lifestyle commitment. Exactly. Right, but things that start to go into into excess. Right? right, you don't need right. If you, you want it, which I understand. Right, I want a lot of things that aren't good for me either. Right, so I get it. Right, um, I can relate. But but everyone has to make a sacrifices to get to the goal. Right, so small wins. Right, and then we're going to test them. Right, I I, I love that I call the uh, the in body. Uh, um, my truth teller, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's I see him on Thursday, Friday, and then I don't see him again the next week, right? Monday, Tuesday, right. hop on this thing here, let's, let's, let's see what happened. Right. Oh man, I'm, I, don't, I don't hold no shade. Like, <laughs> is, is, that, is that a five pound increase? Is your body yeah. fat go up, yeah. right? Yeah, but you, but you told me you had cauliflower rice, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying, for um, for dinner and then water, right? That's what you right. took me, that's what you had all weekend. Right. But according to the scale, ma'am, Oh, sir, right? <laughs> this is not, yeah, this is not what you had, right? So tell me the truth, right? So, it, yeah, but you have to, you have to build that, that relationship with your client where you can call them on, on BS, right? And then hold them to what they say they want to do, right? Because if you don't, you will end up losing them. And but, but, but even worse, they will become more frustrated with themselves and they will just continue to be like, well, it's hopeless, right? I broke the trainer and I still couldn't lose the weight, right? And so, so, so it's, it's almost a detriment to let them continue on their own devices. You have to hold them in, right? Otherwise, then you, you not only will you lose them as a client, but then you will you will you will also damage their their belief in themselves, right? To um to push, right? But if if they if they make this small sacrifice and then and then they see a win, right? That win will over will will, will overtake that sacrifice, and then they will do more and more and more, and then that's when you start to to like build crash. it up, yeah, like exactly, vision. exactly, so exactly. Need some tools, and it gets better. And it's like the smart goal of you seeing that realistic goal, a realistic result, just gets you to get motivated, and you just get to the next level. Yeah, like your stepping stones, you know. So that's it. You're right, man. But it's all about making the right sacrifice. If you don't make the right sacrifice, you're not gonna get to where you need to be yet in life. You're not yeah. gonna get to your goal at all. And that's just that. That's that simple. Yeah. It's okay. that simple. <clears throat> so, so last thing. Um, what are, what are three things? So let's say if you're talking, let, let's give a message to like trainers, and then give a message to clients, right? What are two things you would tell a trainer, right? Um, when when first starting with a, with a new client, and what are two things you would tell a client when they first start in the fitness journey? Two things I would tell a cl- uh, trainer is. Level yourself, one, level yourself to your client in front of you. Either high or low or in the middle, based on what we just talked about, is the one who walk to the wall, or the, um, like they're ready and they're not really unsure, or so on, and the other one, so to right, level yourself to that client. And number two, find out your client's why, their nugget. If you don't understand why they really want that change and to connect with them fully, you cannot get their results. You will not get there. Everything right. else from there is going to be trial and error. Right. Trial and error. Right? And it's just that simple. And I'm speaking from experience. I've been doing this for almost a decade as well, too. And I've had education in the past, but once you get on the field, you have to use your education and your own. Expertise in right. way. That's you know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. Right. So that's where it goes now. And also learning from other experts around you, you can build more from there. And then right. you guys understand. And now with the clients is what would you say? Smart sacrifice, that's one. Okay. If you don't make a smart sacrifice into your bad from your bad lifestyle to making the fitness your lifestyle, you're not gonna get to your goal. And at the same time, it's the second one. It goes into do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do what you need to do. Yeah, 
if you don't do what you need to do in life, you're not going to get what you want or what you need. No doubt. Yeah, right? that's true. So, let me elaborate that is you need to go to the gym to get your in the gym. Right. You know what I mean? I won't say the word, but you know exactly what I'm talking about, you know? And also, too, is if you need to stay away from that Starbucks, you better drive past that Starbucks and then go to Costco, get yourself a coffee, and make yourself some coffee at home mm -hmm. with your own flavor and so on without that extra sugar or that. <sighs> I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I can't say the words. I don't even know what it is. I, like, I fought with my whole lifestyle. Like, uh, I think it was four years ago that I just found out that Venti meant large. <laughs> Venti meant large. Oh, snap. I didn't, even, I didn't even know Venti meant large. And That's I said funny. four years ago because, it's like, of, of course, with COVID, we're locked down. But, like, I never knew Venti meant large. Someone, like, want, uh, someone sent me to go get some Starbucks. Like I want venti, uh, latte, uh, actually something, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I like I say, uh, yeah, this person said they want venti. Uh, what what's the venti latte? I, I, mean, I, I, I was looking for the word venti. Like, what? Like, oh man, that's funny. See, yeah, yeah, but that's just that, man. Do what you need to do, right? And at the same time, make some smart sacrifices. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah, um, for me, I, I would tell the the trainer, right? Um, have the client's best interest at heart, right? Forget your pride, forget, you know, whatever, right? Have the client's interests at heart, right? Um, and then always, continue, the second one will be always continue to to uh, improve in your craft, right? Seek out help or the ideas, right? It, like it improve your your toolbox, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, because everyone is different, man. There's always be nuances and take the time that the client is paying you hard-earned money, take that time to understand their bodies, what they're looking for, right, and give and put in work and writing the program. Don't just give them some generic nonsense because if you do that, then every trainer, right, um, kind of carries that that in, in, in that client's mind, right? They're all the same. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, yep. So and there's nowhere to tell. Yep. Um, for for the client, right? I would say after you vetted that trainer's credentials and maybe talk to some of their other clients, I would say trust them and trust the process. I mean, um, if you ever, if I, uh, most people come to the gym with preconceived notions, right? Um, yeah. You know, so like trust the fitness professional that's sitting in front of you, right? That either have, has, 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 a, has BS in kinesiology, exercise, or have, you know, NASM, you know, been doing it for 10 years, 15 years, five years, even one year, right? That person went to school for that thing, right? Or they have education. If you are at a reputable gym, okay, um, they're not gonna hire bums. You know what I mean, they will hire people who know their craft. Yep. So trust them. The second thing I would say is, Try to surround yourself with a community that has the same mindset as you, yes. right? Because if you, if if everyone in your family are not either health conscious, uh, everyone in your friend group is not health conscious, right? They will peer pressure is a mother, right? Yes. Um, they will they will very quickly uh, I, I derail you from that, right? Yes. And if you're in the gym two three hours a week. Right, you have 165 hours with them, right? So, yeah. so that 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 influence is huge, right? So, surround yourself with people who who want that for you, yeah. you know, who will hold you accountable to that, right? Yeah. Besides the trainer, mm -hmm. um, so love them dearly. Yeah, be smart. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Be smart. No doubt. Guys. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode of the podcast. Again, AP, your favorite trainer. Can hear with you from King Tut. King Tuck, Tuck stands for time under tension. All right, Solo, give me your name, give me your, your IG, all that information. Man. I am King Solo Solomon, right, is my name. I go by King Solo. Now my IG food booking page, King Solo Theory. K-I-N-G, Solo, S-O-L-O, Theory, T-E-Y-I-R-I. You can find me on IG and... Let me know what your cuisine is looking like. If you want some food, I got you. All right, bet. So we're going to put all that information because I know you already understand what he just said. We're going to put all that information down in the description box below. 
right? So again, like the content, okay? Uh, subscribe and share with your friends. We're going to be here having these conversations with y'all. Um, and on the next one, we'll catch you later, man. Out. See you. Peace. Darling, I go fight for your rights, I go die for you.